These buttons are absolutely ridiculous. I really have no idea. Put it like that, tuck all that in, done all this. I've tried different sizes of the fabric, I've tried different buttons. Give it a whack. And guess what happens? Not worked, it's all bent. You'll look like that against it, but obviously like sunk in. It's the next best thing I could get really, because this is a lot thinner cotton. I think this is too thick for them, but... Switch it. Okay guys, so this is the cushion, just a standard small cushion. Um, there are some big ones like this, I'll show you some of them pictures shortly, but I don't claim to be an expert, but you know, this is the way I'm doing it and this is the way it's working. So these are quite a standard sort of shape. That That's one of the back cushions. These are a standard sort of shape for a lot of caravan cushions, but so the material, what I've done, this is just for the top part. The idea is, is with this, on the other cushions what i've done is, is made the arrows or triangles i'm not sure if you can see on there but there are sort of the pattern of it is like sort of triangles which which i've had them running sideways on the seats rather than up or down so that's another factor to think about when you're fitting patterned um, material so the way that i've measured it and the idea is is this side panel and the other side panel are going to have two panels sewn on and then this one is going to go around to the back where it will be fixed on to plywood at the back of here which you'll see shortly so really what we want to be doing is make sure there's enough of the overhang at the back and that's the way that the material has been cut with about an inch to two inches on each side so that there's enough to be able to sew the side panels on so if we turn this back to that way now what you need to be doing is, is laying this material this is front side up outwards and so you need to be laying this the opposite way when you're laying it down on your cushion so if we make sure that we've got a bit of an equal amount over the back Over there that's about right the top part this will be the top of the cushion this part so having a bit more here would be better so that the wood sits lower so that it doesn't compress onto the wood you'll see what i mean with that shortly but so if we get it like that and then flip it over making sure it all sort of stays in place and then what we do is we get the side panels so these are just been cut bigger than the side basically and the way that that will work is these will be pinned onto the side there using these pins this is again this is the way i do it there's probably better ways but this is the way that i'm doing it using these these sorts of pins so i'll start pinning it on there and then i'll come back to you when you've when you've seen it all pinned up so if i move this back so i'm not filming too much of the back of my head um, what we can do is get a pin and what we want to do is create a bit of a seam there together and get as tight to the fabric to the cushion as we can push the pin up across down and in so it's straight across you probably can't see on the camera but it's straight across there right on the edge of the cushion there then 
making sure that this remains pretty straight because you don't want the zigzags going all over the place the other side just begin to pin it all around and I'll come back to you when I've pinned all around that side and then the other side as well right so we've got it pinned up you probably can't actually see the pins but you can probably see the coloured balls here and there but if I just show you zoomed out like that that's obviously to the bottom there so that bit will tuck under and will have to be trimmed so if we look again same this side what I'll do I'll move to the sewing machine now and show you what we do with that right, so here's the sewing machine now what you need to do is get some preferably bonded nylon thread which is um, a stronger thread which I've got a reel of here and I've got a few reels but obviously the size of the inside of that is too big to go on the spool at the top here so what I've done to improvise is put it into a mug and then I've threw a bobbin on here and fed the string around and then threw the rest of the machine I bought this machine quite cheap it was about um I think it was about 80 90 quid from Argos but they do they do do really well there is a cover for here which I've got over the side here and um, just took off because you can it, that enables you then to put fabric underneath the machine if you need to wrap it around and um, the setting I've got it on is number 11 which is the left stitch so it's a it's a it's just a small stitch and the way it works is that it pushes that needle over to the left hand side slightly the idea is, is where we've got the pins we've marked our straight line or near enough straight line and by having the left one on it just pulls it in that little bit tighter towards the actual edge of the cushion um this can be a bit tricky to move the fabric around i mean it's obviously in a bit of a circle but if you watch me do it this is how i've done it there's probably better ways and if some of you know how do let me know but this has worked for me so far i've done about five cushions so far so had to do a few practices before i've done the video but let's get on with it and i'll sew this part and we'll see how, how the cover fits also just make sure the fabric underneath is is nice and straight as well um, there are going to be crinkles as it's fed through the machine on the bend which is something that we can't really help but the crinkles shouldn't show all that much on the finished product so let's go with it now i take the pins out just before i'm getting across and then and then sort of estimate the line roughly where the pin was unsure at any point if the fabric's collecting underneath in a way that you don't want it to you can just pause and make sure that the fabric underneath is nice and straight which it is now as we get to the corner here i know this is the corner because the direction of the pins change we just have to create a small bend around there and obviously the fabric starts to gather up here so we need to kind of like bunch that into small crinkles that will feed around the machine into the corner it can be a bit tricky this bit and to be honest it's my least favorite part but it is what it is and i'll just do the best i can with it really just obviously be mindful of your, of your fingers as well so let's change direction with the direction of the pin As you can see this pins point in that direction as are the rest so we're going to go straight along here just make sure we've not got any crinkled up fabric underneath There is a lot of repositioning of the fabric. So 
So we're at the next corner again now. So again, just bunching up ever so slightly in the corners. And sometimes you do what I've done and take the pin too far close to the foot. If that's the case, keep the needle down in the fabric so that it doesn't move. Take that up and then just slide it out. And then drop it back down. And what I've done is put an upside down pin here. They were all pointing down. This one's pointing up to the ball marks, the edge of the bottom corner of the cushion. So I'm just going to go ever so slightly past that. As you see, I did a bit of a back stitch there on this machine. What you do is you just basically hold that down and then press it and it'll go back slightly so there's a bit of a back stitch and forward at the end just to keep things in nice and tight. So let's go see how it fits. One thing I did forget to mention, when you take the fabric out, just put the foot up, wind the needle right to the top and then the fabric just pulls out the side. Then what I tend to do is snip it nice and close to the fabric. So about there and then on the one underneath. Excuse my camera skills, I'm trying to hold the camera and do this which is a bit of a pain. Put it nice and close to the fabric, not too close. Right, anyway, yes, let's go see how it fits. So obviously we're inside out still. So what we want to do is we need to figure out which way we were sewing, which end was which, because we don't want to get the get it back to front. So best way that I've found to do that is just turn the cover inside out so that it's actually the correct way. Let's get that that way. And then try it both ways. And then if you remember, we left an ever so slightly longer overhang at the top of the cushion so that people wouldn't bang their head on the wood or anything. And so that we could therefore move the wood a bit further down towards the bottom of the cushion. I would say that's the correct way, but hang on, let's just check. <clears throat> I think that's actually the wrong way. Let's try the other way and we'll see which way it fits. But that, that may well be the other way. Let's just go that way. Now, obviously this is very crinkled at the minute but we'll sort that out shortly we just test fitting at the minute so we know we've got enough each side to put on the board and then the back part and the front part or should I say the top and the bottom we've got where's the front of the cushion the roll here is at the front and as you can see now we've got more overhang there than here so this is the correct way so we know the cover fits pretty much we just need to now take the buttons out. So let's take that off. Now with the buttons, I'm just gonna snip them just slightly under the button there. So we've cut the buttons off. Then what we're gonna do is spin that over, pull them out. We're not gonna be needing them. We're putting new buttons in. So now for the my least favourite part, which is really not that easy, we're going to make the buttons for these three. Right, so what we have here are the tools that I've used. I can I can put a link to these 
um, in my description. So this is a tool for different size buttons. I'll explain how it's used in a minute. The one we're going to use is the 19 mil. I used, I ordered 19 mil buttons because these were the same size as the ones that are on there, and they come in two pieces. You get a piece like this. Excuse my uh, poor recording skills. It's quite difficult. That's the top of the button, and then the underside of it is like that. It looks like a bottle top with a hook on. So the fabric that we existing had, the one we've got on the, the machine, on the cushion, is this. But I found that this is far too thick to put around the buttons. It just it just bends all the button, doesn't fit properly or anything. So I've got a similar, similar sort of colours fabric, which is actually an old pillowcase, which I think works really well, and it's just thin cotton. So this will do well for the buttons. So the way this works is we put it face down the side you want showing, face down over the over the hole you're going to be using. And then you drop a button in, push it in, use the scissors. This is the way I've done it again. So it's not, it's, you know, there might be easier ways, but this is the way I've done it. Now cut level with the circle at the top. I'll explain what I mean in a minute. I'm probably not doing a great job of explaining this, but it's probably about the best that I can do if you want buttons on your cushion. Some people prefer not to, but I wanted it to try and look as sort of OEM as I possibly could, to be honest. Um, so, so now that's cut level with the top. What we're going to do is we're going to push it in and we're just going to use our finger to just guide it a bit more into the middle we can much as we possibly can sometimes just pushing that in helps it just kind of pushes it into the middle a bit more so then what we're going to do is we're going to get this and we're going to make sure it's over sorry that's the wrong way around definitely don't do that i've done that a few times so you want the the flatter side where the where the the lip that you can see there is pointing down so it goes that way and you make sure that the hole lines up with the hook and then you place this on the top and basically push it till it clicks. Once it clicks, what happens is you pop this out of the mold and there you go, you have a button. Now I'm just gonna make the other two because there's no point watching me repeat what I've just shown. So I'm gonna do them and then I'm gonna show you how to fit the twine and thread it through the cushion and everything. three buttons there for now and what you're going to need is one of these buttoning needles I don't know if you can see it um, it's got a big hole in the top this one's a double sided needle it doesn't need to be double sided but it just needs to be like one of these big needles I think this was a either a 12 or 14 inch again I'll put a link to it in the description but it's got to be able to go through the depth of the cushion um, so the way that we do it with the twine what i've done is if you measure through the depth of the cushion and leave some hanging for you to be able to tie it and then basically double that length so you've got two lengths of it in one piece like that so then what you do is get a get a button thread it through the hole in the back of it this twine can be a bit of a pain because it starts to bloody unravel when you're putting it through but i i i I was told burning the end of it helps, which I've tried, but I think it makes the end of it too big. But So you've got it through the button like that. Then we need to turn the button upside down and thread it through that little hole in the needle. And this is the bit that's not very fun because it starts to bloody unravel half the time. So what we need to do is get that through like that. Now we're set to go. So let's get the cover back on move them because the, the them two will be the same process as this so let's get the cover on yep. make sure there's no dust left on there get the cover on again making sure it's the same way again then what we're going to do, I put my hand under to feel where the dent is from the old button. So for me, it's right there. So there's the first one. So then what we do with this is we put the end in so that the hole is at the top. 
and then basically just push it through as straight as you can where it will come out at the bottom if you can get it to come out the same hole as the other ones bonus if not it doesn't matter too much but then what we need to do this is a bit awkward is to pull that all the way through like that so now you've got your first button in and you'll have the two strings hanging out in the back so let's do the others If you do find that this is too frayed at the end, you can just snip a bit off with the scissors, which I tend to find make it have a slightly neater end then. And then you can get both of them through the hole again. You need to have both strings go through there. Getting them through again is a bit of a pain. To be honest, this the, the first twine I bought, I ran out of, was specifically for buttoning and it was a, a lot easier to use than this stuff this stuff is just from the diy store um but it's still nylon um stronger thread all right let's see where we're at there's the next one so you want to try and get these as, as straight as you possibly can otherwise it's not going to look very good where are we with this now what's going on here there we go. And now the next is there. Pretty poor this this particular nylon not very good at all and i got it from a big orange diy store if you know the place i mean with two initials not the best stuff at all what happens is every time you pull it through it starts to unla unravel one of the strings doesn't really matter while you pull it through but then it is frustrating when it doesn't go through correctly well, let's double check this one yeah there make sure that's pretty straight So that's the buttoning on that side done. Next is, we've obviously got the threads poking out here. Now, what I used and is, is basically some old fabric with a trusty old tea towel. Obviously a clean one. Is cut, cut that up into sort of that shape like a bit of a rectangle and then we're going to roll that up like so and tie it around that to stop it going back through the type of knot you want to do is what's called a slip knot so you tie this like so so that you've got a loop and then push that through and then basically pull the two of them so you end up with a knot knot in the middle that moves up and down the string you want to get it as tight as you can, especially with this twine, because it likes to find itself unravelling for some unknown reason. So, let's do the same with these.
So what we're going to do is roll these up like this. And basically, the loop that's left, poke it through. And tighten it down onto it, but don't pull it really tight because we want to be checking the other side to make sure that we're getting them all at a level height. Otherwise, you could have some super tight and then some loose and it'll just look all over the place. So let's just get it down so that it's nice and snug, but not too tight. Let's with that one. Then because I'm not going to be able to show you underneath once I flip the cushion over, what I intend to do is I'm going to pull these until it goes, the pulls the button down to the height that I'm happy with. And then whilst underneath, I'll put my finger on that knot and tie two or three new knots on top of it to secure the slip knot in place. So, here we are. Let's start with the middle one. I tend to start with the middle, but you can start with wherever you want to. But if we pull that down, get it to about there, which I'm quite happy with that sort of tightness i don't want it too tight but equally i don't want the buttons all coming out so that's about the tightness that i would like the fabric that's a, that's around it that's kind of crinkly will straighten out a bit once we put the board on the back so at this point don't worry too much about that um what we need what we need to be doing at the moment is just getting these buttons nice and level so that they sit at the same sort of height. It can be really tricky, to be honest, trying to tie knots underneath when you can't even see them. Um, but I'm used to, in these camper vans, bending in all sorts of strange shapes and strange places and banging me head off cupboards and, in this case, sticking my head under cushions and whatnot. There we go. I just tend to tie a couple underneath and then you can always flip it over and tie more if needs be. And then the last one. I tend to pull it down a little bit tighter while I'm tightening it with this particular thread because it seems to loosen a little bit before I get the third knot in. if you want to or another knot you don't really want to be having to access these again so you want to make sure that these are in fact tied up properly okay now what we're going to do cut that off cut that off and cut that off right <coughs> onto the wood right so the next bit with the wood is and place that on and make sure that everything overlaps the wood so we can make sure we get it on so I think we're about good to go there right let's get the staple going Now I'm using an electric staple gun, but you can use just a normal staple gun, that'll be, as long as it's a decent one, it should be okay to just use that.
there's no there's no kind of art to this really it's you know some people might say it's a bit of a mess but you know i think it's good enough for what i'm looking for and as i say you might take more care you might do it a bit different and a bit better than i do it but if it works it works as they say okay right and the last step which i'm not going to film me doing because i'm doing quite a few of these cushions um and so i'm going on a camping trip this weekend so these need to be done but the last the last stage of this process is going to be to get a square piece if i just hold that up a square piece of fabric that will sit over the top of this so that you don't see all these edges and this wood and this mess It'll just be any old fabric if there's any of this left over i might use that but just a square piece that'll sit over the top of that nice and neat stifles around the outside just to cover it up but there's the finished product that's it good to go that's it pretty much that's all there is to it i mean it's in the grand scheme of things it's pretty minor um but yeah that's it basically and then the bottom i've put this piece of fabric over the wood because that obviously this sits on top of one of the back cushions so i had to put the wood on the bottom of it so that's it basically the corner